Aibo one. Um, today I'm going to talk about so many people asking me, except my closest friends who know what is it about, but uh, everyone who's asking me, like so many people asking me, so I, some people even come and commented like, excuse me, tell us why. Why do I like David Bowie? David Bowie is probably one of the uh, one of the greatest influence in my work, I would say. Uh, why? Many reasons. I think uh, his work is quite uh, ingenious. Uh, his music is absolutely fabulous and the way he write lyrics like especially in the early days like the Ziggy Stardust album and even Heroes Stations to Station all these um, uh, even um, the Berlin days uh, all, all these albums uh, songwritings are amazingly <laughs> amazing and, and, and what he produced for People like Lou Reed, Transform album, and I think it got even Grammys, like some of the great tunes are there, Hey Babe, Take a Walk on the Wild Side, and Satellite of Love, Vicious. All these, um, even when he produced for Iggy Pop, they were really great. So he, and, and, and what he did with Mark Bolan, I mean, you know, that time was, it was great too. And he had been uh, one of the most influenced artists for so many people for so long. And uh, I didn't realize till he died in 2016, unfortunately, that the, most of these iconic figures had looked up to him. I really didn't know. I knew he was avant-garde, he was cutting edge, he was different, he was one of a kind, but I really didn't know that he was so special, like so special. I mean, I'm glad he was so special because I wanted him to be my personal superstar. And uh, I was wrong. I mean, from the biggest name of names of industry, they start tributing to him because most of them felt uh, uh, his absence and he was given the iconic award and his friend Gary Oldman accepted. So anyway, um, and he's a trendsetter, musician, performer, uh, actor, he's acting. Uh, I, 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 I really like what he did in Prestige and Merry Christmas Mr. Lawrence, Prestige uh, by, um, um, you know, the guy who did uh, you know, the most famous director. I always keep forgetting names. Um, and uh, many other movies, uh, even Just a Gigolo. My thing, Man Who Felt Worth is my favorite because it's a science fiction and because everybody called him the star man or Man Who Felt Worth because he was actually like an alien. I mean, he had his eyes, the eyes are two colors. That there was a reason for that, but um, either way, he's um, his uh, uh, persona uh, was great, and he always reinvented himself. Like every every album was different, except for a couple of albums in 1987 and 19. 84 or 5, something like that. And other than that, amazing uh, body of work. And so many people have... And if you watch... You, you can't... <laughs> if you watch a, a TV series, you can't go without hearing either Heroes or uh, Space Oddity or Starman. Or if you watch a movie, there's always some Bowie song somewhere. Every, like, every 10... One of the 10 one out of ten movies or one out of ten TV series, you can hear that. And he had helped many, many artists, like from uh, Iggy Pop to, um, you know, many other 
artist and Tina Turner. Mm, I think I, Aretha Franklin also and uh, Nina Simone and all all these great great uh, artists and and um, so like his era there were. David Bowie, Lou Reed, Iggy Pop, and Brian Ferry. These were like Brian Ferry of Roxy Music, um, Lou Reed of Velvet Underground, and Velvet, I think Velvet Underground, no doubt, is one of probably the most influential uh, music band at its time or the last uh, end of the last decade, not decade. I'm sorry, end of the last century, um, and. Uh, even Bowie had a part to do with that, uh, not just underground, but uh, not with the underground, but more like Lou Reed. But Bowie was influenced by them as well. So it was like a back and forth thing. And uh, um, he inspires me to think new things. He inspires me to be uh, fear free, feel, you know, he broke so many taboos. Um, he completely changed um, um, how a, you know the personality would change of somebody's personality would go into different areas, different explorations, no limit. And uh, so he's not just a musician. He's an influencer. He's not these Instagram influencers. He was a real influence of many artists. Uh, many real artists. Even Ricky Gravis talk about him. Uh, Lenny Kravitz talk about him. Uh, many actors talk about him. Um, many filmmakers tribute to him. Um, many painters tribute to him. Many uh, all the art fields. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, I, I, I didn't realize till he died that he was that influential. But anyway, for me, it was very direct. I think Nimneka Hudakala had a lot to do with that influence. When I made it, he was still alive. Uh, I know somehow he had been around my Facebook as well, but uh, in, in pseudonyms or whatever you call it. And then, uh, you know, um, when uh, he, uh, my film came out when he died. And uh, I remember when I was presenting at uh, um, in Japan and they were asking me what was the relation. I, I was saying that it was uh, my, my, my tribute to him. Sadly, it opened after he died. And uh, because I made the film for about seven years. Anyway, if you listen to, I'm no, I know everybody had listened to his music, one, one or the other. New Wave is like part of, uh, you know, uh, I mean, he's like a grandfather of the New Wave whole altogether. I mean, you cannot, you cannot um, talk about British music uh, in the late, last century without mentioning his name and uh, I think even to rock and roll itself uh, so yeah so that's his musical thing but for as a trendsetter as a as a as a painter as an architect as a image uh, image changer image builder uh, his presence was crazy his presence was crazy and um, and to me, uh, especially, not just to me, also for many people, the song Heroes had spoken. I think it's one of the, to me, it's like the greatest love song ever, but and as a music piece, it's great because um, even the Ashes to Ashes album, when they made with, uh, Robert Fripp and everybody, those recordings, uh, it's an amazing uh, body of work. And um, 
you know, it's, it's, one has to listen to him. One has to listen to from his early days up to, and even death, his death was sort of choreographed. I mean, in a way, he did uh, Black Star album, and um, it is talking about uh, an alien kind of person, and uh, Lazarus is last character, actually, because he's gone through lot, many characters, from Sigi Stardust to um, Aladdin Sane to Thin White Duke, um, to many, many, and uh, Lazarus was like his last one. And uh, the album itself is like about embracing death, and when he released, three days after his release of the album, he died. And um, yeah, it's just it's unbelievable. I mean, I know many of my friends, including myself and Mahendra, we talk about it, Mahendra Perra and myself talk about David Bowie, um, many other artists who are Hemal, even Hemal talks about him. Many other artists have talked about him, like uh, musicians and uh, Chitral. Recently I was with him and he was saying how amazing is his low album. I mean, uh, uh, even Philip Glass, the, this uh, co uh, contemporary American con composer, he'd been influenced certain ways by Bowie's music. Brian Eno was a big part of with them. I was actually given the number by my friend Pepe when I was looking for a composer for Middlesbrough. And uh, we were talking in this one of these restaurants where um, Fassbinder, the, the great Fassbinder, the filmmaker, used to hang out with his actors. And he was pointing out, like, you know, that guy was in that movie, in Fassbinder's that movie and all those things. But uh, when we were having uh, lunch, I said, you know, I need a composer. And then he gave me the number. It was like, write it down, 044. And then I knew immediately it's England. And then I asked, who's, who's this guy? What's, what's his name? It's Brian Eno. I was like, whoa. I didn't say anything. I was like almost joking. That's like another big name in the music field. And he said, oh, you know, uh, if he likes your movie, and I like your movie, if he likes your movie, and he might do music. And I, I actually did ring. I was living in New York at that time. I went from Berlin to New York. I went to New York, and uh, we, 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 we had lunch in Berlin with my friend. And um, the week after that, I, I was in, again back in New York, and uh, I rang the number. It rang, and it picked up. Somebody or something picked up. I was panting. I was so excited. It was too much for me and I hung up. So my daughter is asking me to come sleep with her. So I have to go. So I hope this thing, this video will explain why and how and what reason. I mean, I went to New York to learn film because I was introduced to uh, David Bowie's music by Mangala Samaravira, and I was a huge impact. I mean, you know, it his his work became a huge impact. I always think with music in my films. I mean, mostly not just David Bowie, but mostly David Bowie's stuff. And uh, because of Andy Warhol and David Bowie, I, when I said to Mangala, I want to go and learn film, he said, "Why don't you go to New York?" Bowie lives there, Warhol lives there, and then I was like, yeah, of course, I'm going, I'm going there. Uh, I'm coming, I'm coming, so I have to go. So I hope this will explain why I really like David Bowie, and better listen. Go listen to his body of work, and then I don't need to explain all these things. It'll be explained itself. Ciao.